Okay, sports study students, stage two, here we go. Uh, this assessment task uh, is a practical one. Uh, it's the first of your three practical assessment tasks that you'll complete this year. And this one is for badminton. So the purpose of this task essentially is to give you the opportunity to demonstrate your personal development and learning, which are the capabilities we address in sports studies um, in relation to badminton. Uh, so, the description of the assessment, you have a few different sections to it. The first is looking at the characteristics of a skilled performer, where you will do some uh, video analysis and, and uh, comment on the characteristics of a skilled performer based on the men's gold medal uh, badminton match from the London 2012 Olympics. Um, the next section uh, is partly based on your practical performance, uh, which I'll show you the rubric for. So you get assessed against a range of different um, shots and tactics and knowledge of the rules, etc. Um, the footage, um, sorry, the next section you'll actually be doing a bit of a self skill analysis on your performance and compare that with the um, performance of an elite level athlete. Um, you'll do that twice, you'll do that once in week three and once in week six and then there is an evaluation section um, where you'll need to reflect on your personal development throughout the unit and your learning also. So the assessment guide for this task, um, the learning requirements are outlined on the left here and the assessment design criteria addresses which performance standards you get marked against for this assessment task, which is further outlined here. Um, so you can see you get marked against the application one performance standard, application two. Uh, the evaluation and reflection has changed a little bit from uh, stage one. In stage one, you only had reflection. It was R1 and there weren't two of them. This year, it's now evaluation and reflection. For this assessment task, you only get graded against the evaluation and reflection one, which addresses your learning and your progress in learning. And then uh, the last performance standard you get marked against is the understanding two performance standard, which looks at your development and demonstration of the uh, capabilities um, being personal development and learning, which you'll address in the evaluation section. So when the unit is finished, um, I will be assessing you based on the following things for your application two performance standard. So this is my checklist, which I'll uh, be giving each of you. So under each um, category, I've given you some dot points on things that I'll be looking for. So that should be able to help you um, know what you need to do to get a good grade. Um, and then it also covers the knowledge and rules, knowledge of rules, sorry, um, and your gameplay abilities as well. Um, so the first actual section of the assignment, which addresses the application one performance standard. Um, so on the S drive, we've provided you with the men's gold medal badminton match um, for, from the London 2012 Olympics. Uh, you'll need to choose three characteristics of a skilled performer, which you may be familiar with. We looked at them, at them a little bit in stage one sports studies and they've been covered in PE as well. Um, but if you're new to sports studies, then you might need to do a little bit of research on, on the definitions. Um, you'll need to choose three of the characteristics and then provide a definition for the three you choose. And then by watching the video of the men's gold medal badminton match, you need to find examples um, and explain how the characteristics that you've chosen can be observed within that gold medal match and applied to um, how they've performed with examples. So some of the way that this can be done is you can say provide a timestamp of where in the video you're seeing the examples you should be including um, screenshots, screen caps to show exactly what it is you're talking about and be able to point out maybe with circles, arrows, um, 
the sequence that you've seen where you've um, where you've seen evidence of the characteristics of a skilled performer and you need to do that for the three of them okay so you choose one you give a definition and then you outline where in the video you can see examples of this you can provide one you might choose to provide a couple so that you're um, acknowledging you know a couple of examples to really prove that you know what you're talking about and where those um, where those characteristics of the skilled performer can be seen within the video uh, and then you'll do that for the second and third of the characteristics you've chosen to do. Uh, the self skill analysis addresses application one performance standard as well which applies to the elite athlete column which is down here uh, and then the evaluation and reflection one performance standard um, applies to the personal footage column for weeks three and six. So what you're going to do is we give you videos of um, elite athletes or coaches um, performing the skills. You need to comment on their, uh, say for example, for the overhead clear, the footwork, body position, arm action, etc. So comment on each of these little dot points. Um, and talk about how you see them executing the skill. Um, so you'll be doing that for three shots, the overhead clear, net shots and the serve. Last year we, we had a fourth shot in there but we decided to take it out. We took out the smash um, just because it's one that uh, some students struggle to perfect um, and it's quite similar in description to the overhead clear. Um, so you'll use screen captures and annotate where you see the examples of, um, you know, say good footwork for the elite athlete, etc. for each of the dot points. And then what you'll do is we'll film you in the third week of the unit um, and you'll comment on the similarities and differences using screen captures from your footage um, of all of the dot points as well. So it might be that you say you've got fim, uh, similar footwork for the overhead clear to the elite athlete um, and you explain why you say that, but then maybe your arm action is quite a bit different to what the elite athlete um, does. So you need to highlight the things that you aren't doing the same and the things that you are doing um, with similar ability. So you do that for all three of those um, skills. If you did sports studies in uh, stage one, you'll remember we did uh, a similar task for the AFL unit um, where you only chose one skill, but for stage two, we're doing three. Uh, the next section, just after you've completed that skill analysis for the three skills, you'll need to set yourself three goals for what you hope to achieve in the final phase of the badminton unit. So it can be about your skill development, maybe commenting on some of the things that you've highlighted up in this table. It could be about your decision making. Uh, maybe you continue to choose the same shot to play over and over again rather than mixing it up. It could be about your flexibility. Now that's not talking about your joint flexibility or muscle length. It's talking about your ability to be flexible in your style of play. Um, and then the conceptual or tactical knowledge as well. Um, you could talk about the fact that maybe you're not using tactics as appropriately as you could um, and talk about things that you want to do to improve. In week six, this, or the sixth week of the unit, you'll then be filmed again for those three skills and you'll compare your performance from week three to how you're performing in week six. So hopefully we'll see some improvement but essentially what you'll do is you'll use um, side by side photos of you performing the skill in week three compared with week six and you will uh, comment on how your footwork, body position, etc. All of these dot points, you'll talk about where you've seen improvement um, and maybe the things that you still do the same. But essentially, yeah, we want to try to see progress. But you can still acknowledge if, if you are making the same mistakes um, over and over again. We would rather you be honest about your ability um, rather than, than lie and say that you see improvement when the photos clearly don't show that. Um, so you do that for all three of the shots. The next part, addressing the evaluation and reflection one performance standard also is looking at you summarising the areas that you saw improvement between weeks three and six and then uh, summarising the areas where you still see continued challenge between weeks three and six. So 
the areas that you know if you were to continue playing badminton, what would be the things that you could improve on to become a better player. The evaluation section is addressing the understanding to performance standard. Um, so these questions link to the capabilities that we address in integrated learning sports studies being personal development and learning. So did you achieve the goals that you set out for yourself in week three and discuss your successes and struggles? So, um, you know, what enabled you to see improvement from week three till the end of the unit? Um, what struggles did you did you have? What was your biggest challenge is the next question over the course of the badminton unit? And how did you work to overcome this challenge? This might be about not getting as much practice time in because of absenteeism or maybe you've got an injury. Um, it could be that you just know that you weren't as focused as much as you could have been. Uh, it could be a particular skill that you still struggle with. So you just need to choose for yourself what was your biggest challenge and um, if you were able to overcome it, how did you do it? If not, um, you know, what was stopping you? What were the three biggest pieces of learning that you obtained through watching the provided footage? So this is relating to the London Olympic gold medal match. Uh, we're not talking here about what you learned um, by playing badminton. We're really talking about the, the what you learned by watching the elite athletes play. Um, so you wouldn't say I learned how to serve, but it might be that you comment on you learned that um, elite level athletes have to be adaptable in the distance that they serve the shuttle to make it difficult for their opponent to return. So it's important for you then by applying that to your learning, um, sorry, applying that learning to influence your performance, you tried to make sure that you were able to vary the distance that you could serve to make it challenging for your opponent. And then the last question is explaining which uh, characteristics of a skilled performer you believe you have developed throughout the unit and provide examples. So there we're going back to these six here. You don't have to comment on the same ones that you defined and showed examples of. You can talk about different ones as well. You might not have chosen to talk, say, about smooth and effective technique, but you did um, then feel like your technique um, improved throughout the unit. So then you need to provide examples of, of how you saw that. The last section of, well, that's the end of the assignment, but then you are needing to address these couple of questions. So at the end of each of your assessments, you will have um, some questions which are for folio tasks. Um, so the folio is used as evidence for what will be your discussion at the end of the year. So these questions need to be about a minimum of 100 words in length response, but if you choose to add more detail, you can. Um, so how can athletes maintain a sense of purpose and direction in the face of difficulties such as injuries, imposed bans, or personal life issues? So this can be based on your own personal experiences, either during badminton or in other sports where maybe you've been injured. Uh, it can be based on some experiences of your peers or just things that you perceive would be difficult to deal with if um, athletes couldn't participate with everyone else. So, um, yeah, how can an athlete still find purpose when they're not able to participate as well as others? It doesn't have to just be based on badminton. It can be based on other sport as well. And then the last question is asking you to describe the ways in which physical health and mental health are necessary to become a proficient badminton player. So obviously physical health is very important because you need to be fast, you need power, you need agility, etc. So that's that's pretty clear, you can talk about that. But why would needing mental health be important for an elite level player? It might be because of the pressure of um, you know high performance games, um, having resilience when you're losing, things like that. So um, that's the end of this video. Um, if you have any questions, by all means, speak to your sports studies teacher, uh, whether that be me or someone else. Um, and yeah, I hope that this has been useful, but by all means, ask questions in class if you don't understand anything.